Welcome to State of Tech. My name's Jared, and I wanted to talk to you guys today about Android Wear and the differences between using and an Android watch on an iPhone or an Android device. Now, Android, you know, with Android Wear is the only uh, platform uh, from a major provider that has a watch that you can use on both iOS or Android. I mean, there are other watches out there made by other companies, but they aren't as serious of a device as you could say like an Android Wear device or uh, an Apple Watch or something like that. Um, you know, I dance back and forth between Android devices and iPhones all the time. And the common thing that I found is that I just really like the Android Wear devices better. There are more variety in style. I'm not a big fan of the way that the Apple Watch looks. It looks like an old tiny iPod from like 2002. Um, it's just not it's just not an attractive looking device to me. And it's the same as everybody else's. I don't care if you could change the watch band, it's still the same and I just don't really like it. So with Android Wear, I have a, a couple of watches um, currently and I've had a lot of different Android watches. I've got the, Nick, the, the Nixon Mission watch, which uh, has a real style that I like. I just absolutely love the style of this because I'm a fan of the big bodied Nixon watches. I have a couple of regular Nixon watches um, and I just love them. And then I have the new LG Watch Sport, which is Android 2.0. And I have my own thoughts about Android 2.0 so far. But in this video, I wanted to talk about kind of the differences. Like if you went out and bought an Android watch and you wanted to use it on an iPhone or you were thinking, how can I get the best use out of my Android watch? What's the difference is gonna be? Because it's not the same. You definitely get more out of your Android watch if you use an Android phone than you do if you use an iPhone. So I wanted to talk about those things. Um, the first thing is features. I mean, the first time when, when uh, Google came out with Android Wear for iOS, it was extremely, you know, featureless. You, there wasn't a whole lot to it. When I would uh, set up a Android Wear watch on the iPhone, it would lack all sorts of things. I mean, it, it basically all it was was notifications that you were getting your text, your notifications that were coming through and your phone calls and that's about it. I mean, no other good features at all from Android Wear came through, but there's been updates, there's been, things that have changed over time uh, with the newer watches and the newer software and stuff. And so there are more features now, but some of the major ones are the inability to reply to text messages. So if you get a text message in your message app, your iMessages app on your phone, you know, it'll show that message will come through on your watch. It'll show as a notification, but you're not gonna be able to reply to it from your watch, which is a real bummer. Um, now, one thing that I have not been able to test yet just because of current limitations with AT&T's network is number sync. Now, with AT&T and Verizon and probably some other carriers out there, you can actually sync your number between your two devices. So you can have, if you get a phone call or a text message on, say, your, your, your phone, you'll also get that phone call and text message on your watch. And it makes for a really cool experience if you wanna go for a run or you go into the gym and you wanna leave your phone in the car or in your bag, you're still gonna get your phone calls and your text messages. And I haven't been able to get that to work yet on the iPhone and Android Wear. It's allowed me to set it up, but I get error messages and so I, I, I need to get in a phone call with somebody at AT&T that's high enough on the food chain to give me a solid answer as to what's happening. Um, but I have had it work with Android before and it's just fantastic. Number sync is great. I'm not always worried about carrying my phone on me. If I miss a call or if I need to respond to a text message, I can do it all from my watch because the watch itself has its own cellular connection. Like this watch right here, the LG uh, Sport watch or whatever, they're calling it, <laughs> has an LTE chip in it. And so it can receive phone calls and text messages and all that stuff and use data and everything without the phone being there. Typically it requires a Bluetooth connection and that's the way that it works with these phones. Um, and this watch that doesn't have an LTE chip will not do much unless it's connected Bluetooth to one of the phones. 
So SMS is a feature you're gonna lose. Most of these watches have fitness tracking. Um, with Android, you have Android Fit. So if you're using Android Fit and you're on an iPhone, which you're using Apple's health app to track your steps and track all of that stuff, there's no syncing between the two. Now with Android Wear 2.0, there's the support for apps to actually run on the watch separate from the phone. And so I now can use Google Fit to track my steps and all that stuff. And it syncs that data to my phone. So I'm getting the health data transferred to my phone. And then because I have the Google Fit app on here, I'm actually able to use Google Fit as well, which is cool because I kind of like Google Fit over Apple's health app. Um, as far as the whole experience goes and the, the data that's collected and all that stuff, I just like Google Fit better. So there, but there isn't on older versions of Android, there are very few watches. I think this is one of the only watches that has Android Wear 2.0 right now. So older watches such as this one, if, if I have this watch connected to my iPhone, it's gonna track steps and all that stuff, but it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna store it on the phone. It's not gonna send it to my iPhone. It's not gonna show up in um, Apple's health app. It's not gonna show up in anything. And so it's just kind of a waste, and that's really a bummer. It's one of the reasons why you, if you have an iPhone and you wanted a watch for sports tracking and stuff like that, fitness stuff, you're gonna have to go with an Apple Watch or a Pebble or something like that that can talk to Apple's health app in that platform. So there are limitations there as far as features go. You know, um, with, uh, with Android Wear, you can use your watch as a camera shutter. I mean, there are just certain things that you're not gonna get on iOS. What's great is that your watch still now looks like an Android Wear watch. It doesn't go all into some weird, super low feature mode like it used to back in the day, but it still lacks features. So the next thing is integration. Integration is just not as good because with Android, I mean, Android built this, the software on this, or Google built this and Google built the software on the watch so it can better talk to each other and the integration is far better. Uh, same thing with the iPhone and the Apple Watch. Integration is far better because Apple made the Apple Watch specifically to work with an iPhone. Um, and so it's just much more cohesive experience and the integration is there. Uh, of course, there are integrations that do work, like I've talked about so far with Android Wear and an iPhone. It's just not as good. So you are lacking a little bit of integration, but it is so much better than it used to. I could still use Google Assistant on my Android watch. I could still say, you know, the okay, uh, Google term and then it will open up and it will uh, activate and I could do searches, I could do a lot of things in my Android Wear watch even though it's connected to my iPhone because that integration is still there, which is fantastic. Google is adding more and more stuff there because they want, if you don't like an Apple watch, they want you to be using an Android Wear watch with your iPhone, they're totally fine with that. And it shows in the integration that they're starting to step up. It's not perfect, it's not 100%, but I would say you would experience probably, depending on the features of the watch, around 60 or so percent of the integrations across the board. Of course, SMS is mi missing some of the fitness, some of those features that typically are strong selling points of a smartwatch are missing, but you're getting a lot of the other features uh, that are good. So on Android Wear 2.0, we have the ability to download apps right to the watch. So the apps don't have to, before you had to download them to your phone and then they'd sync over to the watch and they'd install on the watch. Um, and so you had to have apps on your phone that run the ones on the watch. And these days with, uh, with uh, Android Wear 2.0, you actually have the Google Play Store on your watch and you can download apps. Now here's the difference. When this watch is connected to an Android device, like this Google Pixel phone here, the Google Play Store on the watch has a ton of apps, a lot more apps available. And I think that's probably because it there are some apps that aren't upgraded to work completely standalone. They still need features of the phone. And so the Google Play Store is much more expanded when you're connected to an Android device because there's all of that, it's, it's the same platform. You get less apps in the Play Store when you're connected to an iPhone. I was really surprised at the small amount of apps 
that were available. I mean, sure, there are some apps, some Google apps, Uber, uh, you know, there's some apps that will work as standalone. And even though I have these devices connected to each other, and I mean, here's even proof, I'm getting a phone call right now on my, um, and you can hear it ringing on my phone and it's ringing on my watch. So the notifications, I mean, all that stuff does work. Um, it's just going back to the topic of apps with the Google Play Store, it's a lot less apps that are available. So as uh, Google starts to roll out Android Wear 2.0, more uh, app developers start to develop watch-specific apps that will run standalone without the need for a phone, I feel like that will expand. But know right now that if you were wanting to, I, I had when I had this watch connected to my Android phone, I had a whole bunch of apps downloaded. I was, you know, playing around. It was really cool. And then when I reset the watch and connected it to my iPhone, it was a much more limited experience as far as the apps that were available. There still are apps, and I'm glad that I can run some of those apps. It just seemed to be um, a lot less that's available. Now, the next thing is Android Pay. <clears throat> Android Pay was a feature of this watch. Uh, and even without installing it separately, it, it was a preloaded, when I would connect to the Android phone, it was a preloaded app. Now that it is connected to my iPhone, Android Pay is nowhere to be found. So Android Pay appears to not be available as an option on the watch unless you have it connected to an Android phone, which is a real bummer because to be honest with you, I like Android Pay better than I like Apple Pay, uh, just because I can use it in more places um, and you know, if, and not be locked down to an Apple ecosystem. Um, whereas you know, Android Pay is just, it's available in the Chrome browser, it's available on my all of my devices. Um, it just seems to be a little bit more well supported on a global perspective, different ecosystems included. So Android Pay, I was really bummed because I, for a couple of days I was using Android Pay, boom, boom, hitting my watch, um, making payments and stuff when I was at uh, you know a juice place or whatever. And now that it's connected to the iPhone, I've lost that ability. So the NFC and everything that is in this watch is basically useless because what else are you gonna use NFC for on your watch other than making mobile payments and stuff like that? So I'm really bummed about that. I really hope that Android, that Google figures out a way with Android Wear to run Android Pay on the watch without having to have a phone that's Android connected to it. I would love to have that functionality back. So lastly is battery life. Now, of course, the integrations being so much more with Android uh, than it is with the iPhone and iOS, uh, there's a lot more going on. You know, I installed a bunch of apps and those apps are doing things in the background, most likely. And the battery life really suffered on my watch. I was getting to the point where I would have to charge my Android watch at around 5 p.m. I'd start the day at around 7 p.m. with a watch with 100% charge. And by 5 p.m., the watch was about dead. And there were two days where the watch actually died slightly before 5 p.m., which I wasn't even home from work yet. So the charger's at home. Obviously, my, my watch is dead, which is a bummer. Now that I've hooked it up to the iPhone, I mean, right now I'm at 85%. It's almost two o'clock in the afternoon. And usually I'm at 85% about an hour, hour and a half into my day. So the battery life when connected to an iPhone is, is light years better because a lot of those features, a lot of those options are not available, so they're not using resources. So I guess that's maybe a benefit of being connected. When I was using this watch connected to Android, this uh, Nixon Mission, I could get two full days of battery life out of this watch, uh, but it doesn't have an LTE chip, it doesn't have Android Pay, it doesn't have some of the, you can't install apps on it really unless they are sideloaded from the phone. It's, it's just not doing nearly as much. Plus this is a much bigger watch, it probably has a bigger battery in it as well. Um, so, you know, there's pros and cons. I mean, if you are an iPhone user, a diehard iPhone user, but you just don't like the Apple Watch, you have Android Wear as an option. And I've kind of talked a little bit about the benefits or lack thereof of using Android Wear on an iPhone. So what it really comes down to is what style of watch do you want? Um, you know, when I picked up this watch, this Nixon Mission, I knew that really all it was gonna be for me is a really fancy notification machine for 
getting notifications instead of pulling my phone out for answering or hanging up on phone calls. It, w it wasn't much more than that. I don't use it for the snowboarding and surfing features that it has. Um, I just used it as a really fancy wristwatch that connects to my phone. And that's kind of what you're gonna get when you're using Android Wear on the iPhone. Of course, you still have some of those Android related apps, those Google apps that you can use, and that's great, but it's just not as full functioning of an ecosystem as it is if you're connected to an Android device. So with that said, I mean, you know, I hope that I've been able to kind of explain it a little bit to you, help you understand that it's still a good experience. It's still, you know, well worth it. If you want a smartwatch, you want notifications, you want a little bit of functionality. But what I would recommend is going with a watch that has Android Wear 2.0 over a watch that has the older version of Android Wear if you're looking for more functionality. If you're, if you're not and you're just looking for a smartwatch that has a good style that you want, then you could probably go with anything, even one that has a little bit older software on it. You're not gonna have any issues there. It's still gonna be a great watch. It's still gonna give you the basics and that's really all that matters, I think. So, you know, we'll see what happens. 2017, it's early in the year. There's been a lot of advancements coming out and to come out. So we'll see what unfolds throughout this year. Let me know if you have some experience with an Android Wear device on an iPhone down in the comments below. I'd love to hear which watch it was that you were using and you know how many features were missing and just how you felt about that experience. Definitely let us know in the comments below. Hey, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up to let us know how we did and subscribe to our channel if you wanna see more videos like this. I have uh, videos coming up talking about these two devices, specifically the pros and cons, like if you're trying to decide, do I go with an iPhone or do I switch to Android or vice versa? I think we might have some good stuff for you there. So make sure to give us a subscribe. Thanks so much and we hope to see you soon here on State of Tech.